For more on the state of U.S. unemployment, let's talk to Brian Peterson. Brian is the Director of Public Policy and Economic Analysis at Anderson Economic Group. Around half the jobs lost because of COVID have been regained, at least according to the people putting all this data together. But that doesn't necessarily mean that people are returning to their same jobs. Unpack these numbers for us. What are we looking at? Well, I, I think the top line number, um, given everything that's going on with COVID-19, and given what's happened in the economy and, and how we saw the wheels come off in March, 1.4 million jobs is, is a promising sign. Um, as we just heard, we saw employment increase uh, across all sectors. Uh, I think that's especially good to hear for retail trade and for hospitality. Um, so I think, you know, the unemployment rate going down to 8%, um, it, it's a solid performance for the economy. And I think that that shouldn't be understated. Um, at the same time, you know, this is a COVID economy. Everything looks completely different, and it's going to take a while for things to return to normal. But by all means, I think that these jobs numbers that we're seeing are showing the fact that people are willing to go back out and go shopping. People are stimulating the economy by spending money. Um, employers are looking to hire. Uh, there's, there's at least hope that a vaccine is on the way, and things are starting to return to normal to some extent. So unemployment dropping to 8.4 percent. That's compared to more than 10 percent in July. The latest figures better than projected. Um, we're still seeing some softness in some areas. You mentioned leisure, uh, obviously travel, hospitality. Some of these areas still suffering. But what do you think are the factors behind the, the numbers change? Well, I, I think that one of the biggest factors, there, there's multiple. So the first thing, uh, we saw the $600 monthly unemployment or $600 weekly unemployment benefit um, eliminated at the end of at the end of July, that probably could have affected some some choices to come back into the labor force. Uh, I think there's also just more optimism. You know, we, we've been reading about a vaccine coming out uh, in the next couple of months. I think people are understanding more how the virus affects the way their behaviors and their choices. Uh, and so we're we're starting to develop just a new equilibrium and a new normal. Um, realizing that COVID, you know, we can see the light of the end at the end of the tunnel. Data shows that government hiring is uh, actually leading the way, but what sort of jobs are we talking about here? Well, uh, I think that, uh, you know, it's not going to be the high paying jobs that are going to come back first. Um, as we heard in the segment, you know, 200,000 retail jobs being added. I think that um, we're going to see hopefully what would be a bottom up uh, recovery that some of these lower level retail and hospitality jobs will be added um, and hopefully that will support um, additional higher paying jobs uh, being added after that. We're also seeing some major companies furloughing or, or laying off thousands of employees. Of course, United Airlines uh, just announcing 16,000 employees are going to be furloughed. Um, talk to us about that and, and how do you get those jobs back? Well, that's, that's really the question, right? Um, you know, Right now, I think jobs at United Airlines, as you mentioned, 116,000 furloughed today. Um, it, it's going to be a matter not only of finding a vaccine, but it's going to be a matter of getting people to uh, realize that air travel is safe um, and getting people to be comfortable with their level of their level of interaction. Uh, you know, in March, nobody was nobody was outside. Everybody was at home. Um, I think we have seen, at least here in Chicago, over the last few months, people are now comfortable going to the grocery store with a mask on, people are comfortable being outside with a mask on, uh, being in relatively close proximity to one another. And it's it's just kind of an ingrained behavior that people are gonna have to learn. You know, what level of risk is acceptable to take um, as a consumer, as someone who wants to travel? Um, you know, how, how am I going to interact with people around me? And I think that what we're seeing in the jobs numbers, again, 1.4 million jobs being added, is a result of people having better information about the spread of COVID, uh, a better understanding of, of how it's transmitted, uh, and a better understanding of their own level of personal risk when they go out and spend money um, and travel. Brian, uh, quickly, if, if you can, uh, I, I talked to a small business owner recently who said they're not sure they're going to be able to come back. They're still struggling. Uh, what can Congress do to try and help some of these uh, companies and, and businesses that are really suffering? Well, I think, you know, the PPP loan program obviously kept a lot of small businesses afloat. I think that there's there's an opportunity to have a discussion about the extension of the PPP loan program. 
Um, and a lot of this is just going to have to come come down to politicking and, and connecting with these small business owners. Uh, I know here in Chicago, you know, we celebrated when um, bars and restaurants were able to open, and then we saw uh, an uptick in the virus, and unfortunately, bars were forced to close. So I think it's it's a significant concern, especially for the leisure and hospitality industry, especially in the northern United States where it's getting colder. Um, how are people going to dine? You know, how are you going to serve your customers when you can't operate a patio any longer? Um, so there's definitely a significant need, um, both among restaurateurs and other small businesses for some type of relief. And I would expect to see that um, at sometime in the next few months. All right. Brian Peterson joining us from Chicago. Thanks so much.